This is awful. Absolutely awful. Queen e5. <sighs> Why did I not consider this? Hello everyone and welcome to episode 56 of the chess.com rapid rating climb series where I play one 15 minute plus 10 second game on chess.com. Try and talk you through my thought process while I play and go deeper into the analysis post game with the help of the engine and just essentially try and push my chess.com rapid rating as high as I possibly can. If you want to check out the previous episodes, then the link will be down below to the playlist. That being said, let's get into the game. All right, so we are playing Dr. Mathematician 1 from, I think that's Iran. Yeah. Uh, we can go E4, we can go C4. I'm going to go C4 today, go for the English opening. I've been experimenting with this a bit, and I honestly don't really know theory to do with the English, but I feel like I can kind of get away without knowing theory playing the English opening, going for sort of a setup based thing with like knight c3, g3, bishop g2. Like I've been doing a lot of e3, knight, g to e2. My opponent plays a reverse Sicilian. So we're going to start with knight c3. Just get a really strong hold over the d5 square. And he goes for f5. Okay. I don't know if this is theory. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. I'm tempted to start with d3 just to take the e4 square because I'm like a tiny bit worried that if I go for like g3 bishop g2 then he might lock my bishop out with e4. But I suppose we can always go d3 to challenge it if he does that. So let's continue with the plan. And when we get our bishop on g2 um, we will have really nice control over the d5 square. I will link a video um, down below. With, well, I'll actually like put it up here if I remember to edit it incorrectly. Um, of a previous video that I made, basically analyzing some games that I played in the English opening, knowing basically no theory and having very little practice in it, but performing incredibly well against you know like. 2,000 rated players and a lot of my thought process in that video was controlling the d5 square with this setup and what I what I've been doing is playing e3 knight g to e2 to potentially push for a d4 later in the game maybe go b3 and bishop to b2 because obviously if I play e3, my bishop can't get out. Although I can't get my bishop out on the king side anyway. Opponent's playing incredibly passively. I'm just going to continue with the plan. With e3, knight g e2. We could put a knight on d5. But I don't want to do it preemptively. Because I don't think I really want to take this bishop anyway. But if I put a knight on d5, he can always go c6 to kick my knight. And then prepare the move d5. So I don't really want to allow that. Now, you know, full disclosure, I have no idea if this is, like, necessarily accurate or not. It just seems like a very comfortable system to play. And, you know, these, these first seven moves that I've played just seem incredibly natural, very non-committal. Just controlling the center can't be bad. The opponent goes a5, which is interesting. Maybe he's trying to discourage me from going b3. By going a4 but we could just take that so yeah i'm gonna go b3 we could play d4 but i don't think there's any rush i think a5 might be a bit of a waste of time um i could always play the move a3 in the future so that if my opponent goes a4 we could meet it with b4 but for now my knight controls the a4 square alongside my pawn and my queen so he's not playing a4 anytime soon and we have great control over the b5 square so he can't even support it like that, not to mention the fact that that would hang a rook. His development isn't easy, because he can't really move his bishop because he'll lose b7. So knight c6 seems like the natural move, but to block the diagonal, develop the knight, and then he can get the bishop out. But the issue, I think, with knight c6 is the knight isn't doing anything useful, because, I mean, I'm not even challenging for e5, and if I thrust with d4 it could just become a target uh, if I play d5 in the future so I could win a tempo potentially 
Also, the knight on c6. I don't know. It. I feel like my opponent might want to play c6 with the pawn to push d5. So the might the knight might be better served on the d7 square, but then of course that blocks his bishop. So I feel like this is kind of uncomfortable for Black. Um, I'd be interested to see what some of you guys think Black should be doing in terms of his development plan. Because c6 looks natural to me. Also just, you know, controls b5 and d5 to stop me from putting a knight on either of those squares. But I'm probably, you know, just going to play moves like bishop b2, maybe push d4 anyway. And c6 knight bd7... It looks solid, but it also looks incredibly passive, because where's this knight going? Like, yeah, he does put it on c6, which, like, it makes sense, but I don't know. I, I, yeah. I could always put a knight on b5, but I can do that whenever I want. Let's just go bishop b2. Let's maintain my time advantage, which is a very rare thing to be happening on the Chess Centurion channel, as many of you will know. But I think this is one of the advantages of playing an opening like this. Because my first nine moves that I have played, if my if my opponent doesn't like commit something major in the center, which he hasn't, he hasn't like confronted me, then I can kind of just develop like this sort of regardless of what he does and get a very pleasant position. Great control over d5, d4 can be played at any point. I can continue improving with moves like rook c1, rook e1, a3, maybe h3 if I want. It's nice. d4 might run the risk of my opponent pushing e4 to block my bishop out. But then maybe I can just go d5, open my dark squared bishop up. My opponent wouldn't have very nice retreating squares for his knight. If he jumps to b4, then I just go a3, kick the knight back to a6. Maybe he can put it on c5 from there. But I could also try and stop that with knight a4. This diagonal will be weak if his knight does move, but if he pushes e4, then of course he will be blocking the diagonal. Which is kind of interesting. You could also consider like d3 and f4, which seems a bit more adventurous, but unnecessary. Okay, when I see the move bishop e6, immediately knight d5 comes to mind. Reason being, if I played knight d5 in this position, then he could he could take me, right? He could just take me with his knight, and the game goes on. Here, if I go knight d5, he can't take me, because after c takes, I fork his knight and his bishop. If I go knight d5, I'm not actually threatening anything, but it's a very nice centralizing move. Maybe I can play knight e2, c3 to support it. He could take with the bishop. And I would take with the pawn, because I don't want to take with my bishop and let him take back with the knight. If the knight comes into a square like b4, something like a3, knight a6. Then we can play like rook c1. That looks pretty nice. That looks pretty nice. We could play rook c1 first to set up that idea. Because we're not actually threatening anything with knight d5. Can he play d5 himself though? Rook c1, d5. Takes, takes. Takes, 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 takes. Yeah, he can do that. I don't want to let him play d5. I don't want to let him do it. So, I think knight d5 is what I want to do. Yeah, I think if my opponent gets d5 in, it opens this bishop back up. Because currently his bishop is kind of lame. It's just trapped behind his pawn chain. Um, and black's position seems to come alive if I allow the move d5. By playing knight d5, I make sure he can't push the pawn, which would add the queen into the game. Um, controlling the d5 square, which would add another defender for the d5 square for black. And therefore he would have 3 versus 2. But if I put the knight there to stop the pawn from moving, then it's two versus two. The pawn and the bishop versus the uh, 
knight and the bishop. Sorry, if he'd have played d5, it would have been three versus three, sorry. Which um, obviously means the defenders are fine. Okay, this is um, this is good, I think. This is good. I honestly don't know exactly what my plan is if he doesn't take. If he does take, then I want to put pressure down the C file because C7 will be quite weak. Um, and try and hang on to the D5 pawn. D4 might be playable at some point, but it might allow the move E4. And if my pawn ends up on D5, I need my bishop to be defending the pawn. So a move like D3 stopping E4 or discouraging it might be a bit better. Here's queen d7. I think rook c1 makes a lot of sense. Because he's not threatening anything. I mean, I'm also not threatening anything. I don't really want to take either of these. I want him to take me. I could play knight c3 and maybe try and put it on b5 or something. But uh, rook c1 looks good. Queen c2 knight b4. I could play a3 preemptively. But I think after if I go rook c1 and he does something like take take knight b4, then I can just go a3. He can't come in because his knight gets trapped. So he would have to retreat anyway. So rook c1 looks good to me. Can he go a4? Rook c1 a4. That's a little bit annoying. I could take it. Hmm. I think I'd rather play a3. So if a4, I can push b4. Yeah, let's do that. I'm just trying to kill black's counterplay here. Rook c1 would be nice because we're aligning on the c7 square. Maybe I can go queen c2 to apply further pressure in the future. But black also does not have to take my knight, of course. We're also taking the b4, the b4 square away from his knight, which is probably a good thing. Okay, rook b8. Gets his rook off this diagonal. Maybe he's preparing the move b5. So knight c3 looks very good to me to stop him from doing that. Some of you might be tempted to go a4, but I think that creates a massive hole on the b4 square. So something like a4, bishop takes, pawn takes, and knight to b4, that looks very uncomfortable. So yeah, I think knight c3, maybe I can follow up with a move like queen e2 to add further protection to that square. Maybe I can just put the knight on b5 to stop him from putting a pawn there. That would be quite nice. Yeah, let's do it. Knight ec3. And as well as defending the b5 square, we are adding more protection to the knight on b5, which is, of course, probably our best piece. I know he can take it, but if he takes it, he has to give up his light squared bishop. And if he takes it now, I probably take with my knight. Probably with my knight rather than the pawn. Yeah, you probably do either. I don't like the fact that um, if like bishop takes, pawn takes, the knight retreats, then he can start going for this b5 plan. He goes knight d8. Wow. Okay. So he wants to play c6. I would assume. It's a very passive move. I guess he could also take with the knight now, because this wouldn't be a fork, because he's moved his knight away. If he does push c6, we could try and put the knight on b6, and then maybe support it with knight a4. That might be interesting. We could also consider the move d4 to finally strike in the center. But I don't like e4. I don't like the fact that he can shut my bishop out the game. So maybe I just go rook c1. Just a nice improving move. Not spend too much time. And see what he wants to do. I think if c6, I should go knight b6. Keep pieces on the board and not let him go b5. I think that is probably the best course of action. If he goes b5 right now, then I assume I just take, take, take. And I'm just up a clean pawn with an incredible light squared bishop. And if he goes e4 to try and lock me out, I can always play a move like d3 to challenge him. Very comfortable position right now. By the way, if you've made it this far in the video and you're not already subscribed, what are you doing? 
I'm sure you must be enjoying this to some extent if you are still around 15 minutes into this. So I'd really appreciate it if you can support the channel with a subscription. Anyway, anyway, A4 is of course more of a move now, actually, because he can't put his knight on B4. But if we go A4, he could, you know, try and get his knight back into the game and put it there. However, if he pushes C6 and we get knight B6 in, a4 is more of an idea because the knight can't go to c6 anymore, but I put I want to put this knight on a4 if this knight goes to b6 after c6 is played to support the knight, because he'll probably play a move like queen c7 to try and attack it. And then maybe we can try and go after the a5 pawn, because the a5 pawn will be incredibly weak and he won't be able to play rook a8 to defend it because my knight will be defending that square or attacking that square. So that's very, very nice. Very nice. And this knight won't have much for future either. Because if he goes c6, then his knight obviously can't go to c6. So he might have to put it on like f7. But even then, where is it going? Like g5, e4 maybe? We can always play d3 to prevent that if he puts the knight on g5. He pushes c6. I think knight b6 is the logical move. Um... Queen e8 looks incredibly passive, so queen c7 is probably going to be played, and then knight a4 looks very, very good. So we're going to go for it. We are going to go for it. He's got to play queen c7, surely. Surely. It will align my rook with his queen, which I don't... I don't know whether that will actually come to anything, but it's worth noticing worth noticing so okay okay there's not an obvious way in here like i don't know how i'm going to try because i feel like i've got an advantage i've got a knight on b6 i've got a beautiful bishop i've got nice control in the center i've shut down all of his queen side play and i don't know whether he can go for moves like f4 or not they seem a bit over ambitious because if the center starts to open up, let's say he goes like f4 takes takes and the e file opens up, I feel like that only helps me. We could, of course, retreat this knight, but then he just goes b5, and I don't want to allow b5. So let's put this knight on a4. It's very difficult for him to remove this knight unless he plays a move like knight to d7. Knight d7, can we go c5? Can we go c5? Pawn takes. Knight takes. Bishop takes to keep the queen defending e5. And then something like knight takes c5. If c5 and he takes here, then I assume we just take with the pawn. And that looks very, very nice. Although c5 knight here, we could take on d6. No, we, no, we can't do that. c5. Okay, if knight takes pawn takes, that looks very good to me. c5 if pawn takes pawn, knight takes knight. He's if he takes with the queen, then we take here. So c5 takes, knight takes, bishop takes, knight takes. That was pretty good. E5 is kind of weak because we're undermining the D6 pawn. And the queen defends B3, which is an important observation. The problem is, if we take first, we take first, let's say queen takes, and then we go C5, then he probably just goes D5. Okay, what if we go C5 and he goes D5 anyway? Um, knight takes, bishop takes. Can't we just throw another knight on b6? Hmm. Are we allowing the move d5? Well, a, a5 will be incredibly weak. a5 will be really, really weak. 
and maybe we can try and target it with moves like bishop to c3. Because if we keep a knight on b6, he can't go rook a8, and we block this diagonal. So that looks pretty good to me. If he takes with the knight... Uh, honestly, I didn't really consider this. Knight takes, knight takes. He takes here. Ooh, is that a problem? Knight takes, knight takes. Ooh. Ah, uh, okay. No, this might not be that good if he does this. I kind of overlooked this. Knight c5. Maybe it was better to take here first and then push. Because now I'm giving him this option. I think this is a bit of an oversight. Yeah, he goes for it. I think I have to take. And I should play quickly because at least I do have a time advantage. He takes here. Now, I thought he was going to take this knight. I thought he was going to do that. I think knight c4, and we might be okay. We're, di we're down a pawn. But this knight is terrible. Our bishops are good. We could go knight a4 to just go after c5. b6. I uh, don't know. Maybe we can push d4 to try and make use of this alignment. If knight c4, going after e5, he could just take me. So, in the interest of keeping more pawns on the board, I'm going to go knight a4 to target the c5 pawn. I, su I suppose we have induced d takes c5, which weakens the e5 square. The issue is he can now move this b pawn because we can't keep our knight on b6, which is annoying. He goes b6. Can we go d4? Can we go d4? I'm trying to look at this alignment. But his knight is helping out in the defense. So. In f3. Put in more pressure. He always has bishop to d5. So that doesn't really work. Hmm. What about f4? f4 looks ambitious. Can go e4. But then, then we have d3 goes for a move like bishop f6. That looks okay. That looks okay. f4 if bishop f6 straight away. Take, take. Take, take. Oh, I can't draw arrows. Mm. f4 bishop f6. Can we go d4? We could push e4, but then we take here. So, f4, bishop, f6, d4. We take, take. Take, take, take. Take, bishop, b3. That looks like a bit of an issue. Um, D4 straight away. That might be our best course of action. Trying to open things up. D4. Ah, the issue is Bishop opens up on A3. So something like D4 takes, takes, takes. If my Queen takes, then B3 hangs. And if my Bishop takes, then A3 hangs. Oh no, if I take with the queen, then I threaten mate though. So if d4 takes, 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 bishop f6. Uh, queen d2. We have some nice pressure, but he could maybe just go c5. What 
All of the e file opens could be useful. His development is a bit difficult. We could start with rookie one. Could. Because he doesn't have obvious moves here. If he moves his knight, then he loses control of c6 a bit. If rookie one, he could go bishop to d5. That might be the most natural move. Takes, takes, d4, the c pawn is pinned. That looks half decent. Hmm, not easy. And I have lost my time advantage. I'm going to go rookie one because I think the e file is going to open up in some way or another. Yeah, probably. But I'm also kind of just passing the ball back to my opponent and just asking what he's going to do. I am really annoyed about blundering this c5 pawn like that. I should have seen knight takes. I definitely could have just gone um, knight takes, bishop takes, then c5. That would have been a lot better. Or I didn't even have to commit to c5. I could have seen what he did. But yeah, this is um, this is not quite correct. But it's not lost. We have strong bishops. Our knight is decent. We control a lot of the pawn breaks in the position. And we just have a lot of pressure going on. And part of the reason that I'm playing rookie one is because I think it's very difficult for my opponent to move. It, his position doesn't seem to naturally play itself. Which a lot of the time, when you have a much better, not much better, but when you have a better position, a lot of the time, the position kind of just moves for you. Here I'm not so sure. He goes bishop f6, which does take some eyes off of c5, which is worth noticing. Um, What about d4? Because this alignment could be useful. If d4, e4, then we just take. If d4 takes, takes. That looks pretty good. We could potentially overload the knight by doing something like if the c file opens, bishop takes, knight takes, and the rook takes e6 and win the knight because of the pin. So we're going to play quick. We're going to go d4. Usefully, he can't put any rook on d8 because his knight is there. And if his knight moves, then c6 becomes weak. And the bishop becomes weak. So I think this could be the key. The key could be the fact that it's so hard for my opponent to move. If the b-pawn moves, c5 is a problem. The c-pawn, if it moves, not only will it, like, die, um, but also it opens the c-file up for pressure on c6. The rook can't really go anywhere useful because the knight's in the way. The knight can't really move because c6 and the bishop both need defending, but like I said, that could be the basis for some tactics. The queen can't really move because she needs to support quite a few of these pawns. Um, b6 you don't have to support necessarily but otherwise if you don't then the rook has to support b6 and you know that's kind of tying the rook down to quite a menial job my, my knight is attacking two pawns and his rook is defending one pawn like his, his rook is getting dominated by my knight essentially okay if takes takes can i take There's also an idea of like takes, takes, rookie six, knight e6, and bishop b5 pinning the knight, and you can't take because of takes. It's interesting. Of course, I'm going to take back though. I can't let my opponent get c5 in because then he probably shores things up on the queen side a bit. And I don't want to allow that. He goes e4. Interesting. Can I not push d5? Can I push d5? d5, bishop b2, knight b2. He can't take because I take. And then after takes, takes. Um, this looks like an issue. This is a big problem. 
my bishop is kind of locked out of the game, I know. But this tactically looks like it works. And if nothing else, after something like bishop b2, knight b2, bishop d7, uh, I could take, but I could also push d6 and just get a passed pawn. I think bishop back, probably the only move. Probably. It's annoying that my light squared bishop is locked out, otherwise c6 would be even more vulnerable. Uh, bishop d7. He's going to try and play c5, I suppose. Bishop d7. What is the plan? Ooh, bishop f7. Interesting. Well, now c6 is more of an issue. If I take and knight takes... Um, queen c2, rook c8, he's okay. He's okay there. So what about d6? d6, queen d7. Um, again, not obvious. Not obvious. Maybe knight c4? Maybe I... Can I start with knight c4? No, I can't. Because he'll just do this. Um, mm, 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 mm. I could leave the tension. I could leave the tension. Because if he pushes c5, okay, I'm going to play d6 anyway. I could also play knight c4 if he goes c5, because my pawn would be stopping his bishop from taking the knight. Which I think probably benefits him, and then I'm maybe trying to get him to squares like e5, or maybe e3 to, tar to pressure f5, and defend the pawn. So I can leave the tension here. A move that I quite like is rook c3, preemptively guarding b3, and preparing to double rooks in some positions. Queen d4 is also quite useful, but then c5 comes with tempo. So rook c3 looks good. Again, kind of a waiting move. But he still can't take because there's the same issues. He pushes c5, knight c4. Maybe he goes b5 though. b6. And then we can put the knight on e5. So let's do it. Let's go rook c3. Is this the right move? I don't know. Maybe a move like bishop f1 is better. Trying to get into the b5 square. If the queen tries to like blockade on d7 after a move like d6 if he pushes c5. That's a lot of variables. Queen e5. Ooh, I did not consider that. My rook's under attack and my knight is undefended behind the rook. And now he can take. Oh my days. What am I doing? This doesn't work. This just hangs a rook. Oh, that's really frustrating. That's a great move. I play a move like queen c2. He can just take. And then we're in big trouble. Oh no, this is really bad. This is really bad. How how do I do this? My rook is simply under attack. And my knight is behind the rook. Can I trap the queen? Knight c4. Queen c3, rook e3, queen f6. No. No, I can't trap her. Um, this is awful. Absolutely awful. Queen e5. <sighs> Why did I not consider this? Why did I not consider this? Okay, I, I don't know what else to do. 
I don't know what else to do. I have to defend the rook. And queen c1 also defends the knight, I suppose. But he just takes, and I'm down two pawns. I'm just down two clean pawns, and his position is it's fine. It's fine. My bishop's locked out the game. My knight isn't doing a whole lot. I can try and fight back, but I don't know what I'm going to be able to accomplish here. This position is way too solid. And I'm low on time. Honestly, two stupid moves this game. Rook c3 was a stupid move, and c5 was a stupid move. I think I, think I just struggle in these positions where the moves aren't obvious. Well, no, not, not so much the moves aren't obvious, but like... When I need to make improving moves, but it's like, I don't know, maybe obscure positional moves that I need to be making, or maybe I'm just waiting too long, and I think I've got more time than I do to try and, like, prove an advantage. Stupid. Really is. Ask me why I didn't go just rook c2, which is way more solid, and then queen e5 would never work, because I just take. And I achieved the same thing with rook c2. Yeah, he takes. <sighs> the, the least I can do is play quickly. The least I can do is play quickly. Knight d3 is a move because the pawn is pinned to the queen. What I want him to do is something like takes, takes, and c5. So I can go knight d3 and knight c5 to at least try and get active. I think he... Can probably just play a like, move like d4 though. Probably just do that. Rook c7, knight e6. Yeah. Yeah, you can just push. Let's at least try and get active. I mean, I'm not threatening anything. Knight e6. I'm going to go rook a7. I'm not really doing much. Takes, takes. Okay, maybe my knight can come to like c4. Again, knight to d3 is still a thing. If rook a8, maybe I can line stuff up with my bishop. Rook c8. Okay, that looks like a good move. Queen a1? I'm looking for tactics on this bishop somehow. I don't think they exist, but they could exist in the future. Queen a1 just potentially lines some stuff up. Gets my queen out of the way. He might be able to go d3 though. I did also allow rook c2. If rook c2... Knight d3... Queen to a square like d5, and then maybe I have tactics involving rook f7, queen f7, and rook a7 to win the rook. Okay, he plays more simply with queen d6. A nice move, very solid. Very solid move. Queen a2 is tempting. Try and set stuff up here. Bishop h3 is also tempting. I think I need to go for it. I need to try and get this bishop into the game. If g6, maybe I go bishop f1 to try and put the bishop on c4. So again, try and align things here. Bishop f1, d3. The pawn's getting really close. Really close. Um, considering g4 to try and go all out, but knight f4 looks crushing. f3? He is threatening b4. Here, here, here. I think we need to go for it. 
Because realistically, we're lost, right? Like, the position is lost. So we need to try something. This knight controls d1, which could be useful if the d pawn gets through. To try and put up a defense. But we need to try and create some magic. You know. Otherwise, we're going to lose. I'm trying to put more, like, just put pressure on his king side. Um... Ooh, knight g5, that's a nice move. That's a nice move. Okay, I don't know what else I can do. <laughs> Let's drop back. If e3. No, he takes. Okay, let's drop back. I was considering the move rook e7, but the knight defends the bishop, so that's no good. Maybe we can put the knight on d3. Oh, that's an interesting move. Might just be a good one as well. I think we might have to go g4. Try and block things up. Horrible position, but we are creating... Uh, I, I, I think we're creating some chances. Some very small chances. I don't think that carries a threat. Knight d3, bishop c4. Don't know. Don't know. H4 is tempting to try and boot this knight. To try and expose this bishop to tactics like this. But it doesn't work. Oh. Okay, I have to take, obviously. Uh, that's a nice move. It's a very nice move. Well played. Well played. And I think we're running out of ideas. I think we're running out. Of course, we still need to try and create counterplay, but I don't see it. We're like our pieces are so passive. Our rooks are only good piece. Rook c one is on the way. Trying to set something up, anything. <laughs> Don't think anything works though. Can you go queen d6? He takes. He's trying to get a bit active, but his queen controls like all of the important squares that I want to try and go to. Controls all of them. My bishop can't do anything useful. F3, okay. There is literally nothing here. This is so sad. So sad. I'm just going to take. I don't know what to do. Rook f8, I assume, is... Oh, he just mates me. I just completely missed that. That was a really, really sad game. Because I felt like the opening went so well. And then... <laughs> I just misplayed the middle game massively. I don't know if I'm missing any obvious ideas of the English. So please let me know if I am. But let's get into the analysis. As rough. So, the game review gives 77.1% accuracy for me, and 867 for my opponent. He played very, very well. I mean, I clearly got an advantage out of the opening. I would explain the opening, but I honestly, I think I said as much as I really know in the, like, during the game. My entire plan was just to get this set up, and then kind of see from there. And I didn't, 
A5, by the way, was an interesting move. I didn't really want to push D4. Because I thought my opponent just plays E4. And, okay, I think apparently the idea is F3. Obviously, he can't really let me take. So, if EF3, Bishop F3, apparently this is good for white. Something like C6, B3, and the game goes on. I... I didn't know this. I didn't know this. So it is good to start to learn some more of the ideas of the English because F3 isn't necessarily a natural move. But B3 is fine. Knight C6, Bishop B2, Bishop B6. We're just developing. And here, I thought that I should play Knight D5 to stop him from going D5. Apparently, that's not correct, though. And I should just go D3. And if D5... Then d4? What? e4? f3 and white's better. Okay, this to me looks counterintuitive, but apparently not. Apparently this is just normal. Okay, and it's something like bc4? Knight f4? Bishop f7, fe4, cb3, ab3, fe4, knight e4, knight e4, bishop e4, and white is better. I mean, I think, like, it shows how rich the English is, because these kinds of lines maybe I see during a classical game, but I don't have enough time in a rapid game to explore all these lines. Espe well, at least with how good I am currently, or how bad I am, maybe, would be more accurate, unfortunately. But also trying to explain my moves, it means that I can't calculate as much, because me calculating something in my head takes way less time than explaining it. So it... It's just a symptom of um, making a YouTube video, I suppose. But it's whatever. It's whatever. I go knight d5. It's still good. Queen d7. We go a3. Apparently d4 is the best. I didn't like the idea of e4 for my opponent, though. I thought it was quite good for him. Knight e7. Knight e7. d5. Bishop f7. Bishop f6, gf6, f3. And you just ruin the structure. Eh, tough to see again, long calculation. I go a3, which is still a good move. Still good. Rook a b8. And again, d4 is the idea. I think I didn't know. I didn't know that after something like d4, e4, that f3 was good. I didn't know this idea. Maybe this is obvious, but I wasn't sure. I go knight ec3, which still maintains a healthy advantage, you know. Knight d8. We go rook c1. f4 was the best move. And if black pushes, then d3. And if he... T so, obviously, break his center apart. And if he goes ef4, knight f4, And then I put this knight on d5. <sighs> I don't know. I just don't know these lines well enough, in all honesty. Like, it's kind of annoying, because a lot of these ideas seem quite foreign to me. But I am learning more about the English, and I think it's an incredibly good opening. Um, personally, I want to learn more of the ideas, rather than, like, specific lines to memorize, because I don't like learning chess that way. I don't like memorizing a ton of stuff. I like to understand the ideas. And I think this is helping with that. So, you know, things like, things like, if d4 and e4, then f3 is normally the key break, except not here. Oh, not here, because I just lose the knight. But in previous positions, was it here? Something like d4, e4, f3. I mean, obviously I have d5, but let's just pretend I don't. f3 is still a very good move. 
So, yeah, we set this up. Now, I was quite happy with this because my knights are very difficult to remove. My opponent goes knight d7. Okay, the best move here I don't think is very... The two best moves here are so difficult to find. They really are. I would encourage you to try and find... There's, there's basically two good moves for white. Try and find them. I mean, if you can find both, then, I mean, well done. Uh, but finding one of them would be equally as impressive. So I'll give you a minute to do that. Let me know if you did manage to find it and be honest about it. One of the moves is bishop c3. This is an idea that I alluded to during the game. After knight b6, the idea is bishop a5, and this is just a pin, and you can't defend the knight any anymore. So something like rook a8, bishop b6, queen d7, and white is just up a pawn. The other move in this position is knight d5, forking the queen and the bishop, meaning that you have to take if you take with the pawn, then cd5, queen's under attack, you have to block it because the queen can't run to b6 because my knight controls that square, and then de6, moves like d4 are potentially coming as well, and the game is as good as over. So, if knight to d5, then black has to take with the bishop, cd5, c5, and then d4 to break open the center, and white is better. Very tough to see. I go c5, this is the wrong idea again. Knight d7 would have also been good, and after bishop d7, moves like f4, c5 here is now more viable, um, and if my opponent plays a move like d5, then I can go f4. Knight b6 is also good though, and uh, you know, then I can maybe go after the a5 pawn. So, yeah, very, very annoying. I go c5 too early. And the thing is, I, I, I just missed knight c5. If a move like d5 was played, then I'm just happy, because this is very difficult to get rid of now. I kind of lock the knight in place. Something like knight d7, you have to take with the bishop, because the queen is protecting e5, so like bishop d7. Knight b6, bishop b6, queen c2, and white is just better. It's just better. I just miss knight c5. We go knight c5, and here I assumed that queen b6 was the best. Something like this, and I thought this was really good for black. The computer thinks that dc5 was the best idea, but I felt like it gave me some more chances than was necessary. b6 is the only like good move here, because you just need to defend c5, quite simply. Rook e1 was inaccurate, d4 is the best, but I don't know, I thought that I didn't have a lot in this position. Although if he goes e4, I assume I still have this d5 idea, which is what I played in the game. I go rook e1. Bishop f6 is played, and we go d4, cd4, e, d4, and e4. Now, you can't really take here, because, like I was alluding to, moves like rook e6, knight e6, and rook c6, I start to get a lot of counterplay in this position. And the only move here for black is queen d7 to try and hold on to the advantage. Because if you play something like, I don't know, queen a7, then bishop d5... I mean, you, the, the knight's hanging, so let's not be stupid here. Let's say queen e7 is played, then bishop d5, and I'm building up a ton of pressure on this knight, and you can't really defend it. So the best move is queen d7, keeping the knight on the knight, the rook, and the d5 square. And white can continue to put pressure on, you know, moves like knight b6, threatening maybe bishop to d5. Black again needs to play incredibly accurately here. Moves like queen d8 or queen a7 to try to attack the knight or rook b6. And d3, uh, this looks pretty losing to me in all honesty. But yeah, I go d5 
in this position and my opponent takes on b2 i take on b2 and he goes bishop to f7 and here i have two moves d6 or f3 or knight a4 apparently f3 honestly i should have played i really should have something like ef3 queen f3 and uh, this is some incredible pressure my bishop is now incredible my rook's open, my rook's open, my knight can get into the game at some point. I, I really should have found this. Rook c3, I thought that my opponent just couldn't move. And I could continue to build the pressure. But he is queen e5. And I, I mean, queen c1 is the best move here, but it's not good enough. Cd5, I try to create some chances in this position. But my opponent is accurate. You know, knight e6, rook a7, ab4, ab4, rook fc8. Here, I'm trying to make something happen. Um, I'm looking at tactics, like if this rook and queen move, then like rook f7, king f7, and queen a7 to pick the rook up. But there's way too many things that I'm counting on to go my way. And my opponent just doesn't let it happen. He plays very accurately. Queen d6, bishop h3, g6. I try f3. Knight g5 is very good. I missed this. F4 again, really nice idea. I can't allow it. He goes rook c2, knight d3, f2 check. Great move, by the way. Knight f3 wins the rook. Bishop d5, rook bc8. And I just, the, like, the best move is to trade the queens. Like, I can't trade the queens. I go knight e4. Um, just to try something. And, like, Apparently, there's only two good moves for black, either taking or going queen to e5. So I did pose some problems. I did pose some problems. If queen f8, white apparently draws with the move queen h4. We, tar we uh, target the h7 pawn, threaten moves like knight to f6. And the only move is rook 2c7. And like rook c7, rook c7, knight f6, king g7. And queen takes h7 or knight takes b5. This is the kind of thing I was going for. I was trying to create chances, but he just takes he takes it off the board. Goes f3. Great move. I did I honestly just did not see this. And I don't have any chances anyway. Like my best move is to sack my queen or sack my bishop. Or sack my queen. <laughs> or sack my queen. Or sack my rook. So yeah, I just missed it. Um completely, in all honesty got mated well played to my opponent very frustrating to have lost after having such a nice position in the middle game i think i'm gonna learn a lot about the english from this game so it was useful in that sense but i wish i had capitalized a bit more on the position that i had during the game that's chess at the end of the day I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to check out the previous episodes of the Rapid Rating Climb, then the card should appear somewhere on the screen right now, or maybe it's already on the screen. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.